How's it going? So today I'll be covering a function text join in Excel. And uh, it's a great function uh, and it allows you to do a lot of nice things. Uh, so one of the things we'll be talking about is a situation that you may have when you work with a function like VLOOKUP. So a lot of people are familiar with VLOOKUP. So what VLOOKUP does, it basically looks up something in one column, then returns uh, from another column, let's say in this case, uh, a lot of times, I guess this wouldn't be the best uh, data for something like VLOOKUP, but if we had some IDs, so let's actually just do an example, right? So I have this uh, region, uh, just basically we just typed in one of our regions, now I'm going to do a VLOOKUP using that value. So I'll go ahead and start with my equal sign and VLOOKUP. We'll go with our function. I'm going to tab it over so I don't have to type the whole thing in. So the first argument in our VLOOKUP function is our lookup value. This is what we're looking for. So I just want to say that I'm not going to be really talking about VLOOKUP in this particular tutorial. Uh, so I won't be going into details about like VLOOKUP function. If you want to know more in detail about VLOOKUP, watch the VLOOKUP video. But for now, this is going to be my lookup value. So that's going to be my F2 cell comma. I have my lookup array. So I want to make sure the first column is the column that includes the data. I'm looking for so I'm gonna go ahead and make a selection here so there it is that's my actual range where I'm gonna be looking for this I usually prefer to lock the tables as a default just for good practice in this case it wouldn't matter but it's a good idea uh, comma now the next thing is our column index so I'm gonna go with one two three to return our sales rep name there we go we can already see we're kind of looking finding something and finally the last argument we have is our match type so I'm gonna go with zero for exact match which is false argument so I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter so basically what this function did it went through this column which is the column B which was the first column in my table and it started looking for my value and it kept going down until it found it. There it is. Then it went to over and grabbed this name and returned it. Now this is great and VLOOKUP can do a lot of great things for you. The only uh, problem, and again it's not really so much a problem, a lot of people uh, consider this a limitation for the part of VLOOKUP, I just think about it as a function, that's the way it works. Because sometimes it will actually help you because that's exactly what you want to do. Now, in our case, let's say what we are trying to do, if there are multiple matches, so if you look here, there is one match and there was a second match here, for example, for this Dale guy, and there's a third match for this Matthew and so on. So sometimes you have multiple matches. When you have multiple matches, VLOOKUP is only going to find the first one and return the value, and that's pretty much it. So now let's look at a situation, what to do if you have multiple matches and you want to return those names side by side. And that's what I'll be doing today. So I guess I'll take the step by step and kind of get to it little by little. But uh, I guess the first thing I have to do is create an array that is going to return what I'm actually looking for. So how do we create that array? I'm going to start with an equal sign here. And basically, I'm going to basically grab the range that includes what I'm looking for. So it's going to be right here. I'm going to click here. Then I'll do my control shift arrow key down. That's the range where I am at. I'm going to lock this range. And I'm going to say equals to. And I'll pick this. So right now, basically, I'll be running an array logical statement comparing if all of these cells are 
actually equal to whatever is in my F7 cell, which is right here. And all of them that are will actually return true and everything else will just return false as a result. Now that's great, but that's just going to give me basically truths for every one that says Southern. So basically you can look at this entire range right here and imagine it this way, that everything that is not what I'm looking for is just going to be replaced with basically false. So the first one is going to be false. The second one is going to be false. The third one is going to be false. This one is going to be true. And then again, false and then true and then false, 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 true. And so it, it goes. So that's kind of the way you can envision what's going to happen. Now, however, the results I want are not in the same range that I have. So I want to grab the results from the other range only when they're actually true. So basically, if this is true in this B5 cell, I want to get the value in the D5 cell, which is this guy's name. Right. So the way I'm going to accomplish that, I'm going to actually wrap this around in an if function. And that's going to be my if logical argument. And I'm going to do, it, to do comma. And my second argument, my if function is what to do if the result is true. So that's going to be all of those names. So I'm going to write control sh shift down. That's obviously not going to go all the way because we have a blank there. So a couple of other times until I get the whole thing. There we are. So that's what I'm going to return in case it's actually true, right? So, so far so good. So that's our if function. So my if function is basically going to return this things when it's actually true. And usually you have a third argument in your if function after the comma, which is what to happen if it's false. So for, for now, I'm not going to use that. I'll leave it alone. And what if function is going to do, it's just going to return false in all the other cases. But when it's true, it's going to actually grab those people's names. Fair enough. So that's great. So for right now, I'm going to hit enter and this is not really going to work uh, in a way that not that it's not going to work. It's not going to d display the results for, well, obvious reasons, because we have an array and, you know, we can't really return the entire array here. And by the way, uh, I, I assume some people may ask, like, why do we see the result Dale Warren here? So the way it works is because this is an array calculation, it basically grabs the result in the same row that I'm currently am. So if you look in the same row that I'm running this formula and go all the way to the left, you see that the southern value is Dale. It doesn't mean the first argument in our array is going to be that. It's just because we're in this row, that's what we get. The first one is actually going to be this guy, which is Paul. So that's our if statement. So for now, I'm just going to hit enter, leave it alone. So it can return whatever it wants to return. I don't really care. So I want to show you something else for a second before we come back to this. So I want to talk about text join function in Google Sheets. So text join function, what does it do? It basically is a function that will join a range to one string or an array to a string. So the first argument is our in our text join function is what is the separator after the join? So if we were to join, let's say this first four items, we would probably want to separate the text join by something. So let's say we wanted to separate it by something like a comma space. Why not? Since we're on it. So comma and space, that's what I'm going to use for joining, then comma. The next argument is this Boolean argument where you can type either false or true. So right now I'm going to go with false for a second and I'll explain you what that does. That's a statement to ignore or not to ignore, ignore blanks in our array, really. That's what it is. And finally, there is a third argument, which is going to be the actual range or the array. So to simplify this, I'm just going to pick this small range here from D2 to D5, just to show how the function actually operates, right? 
So I'll go ahead and close this parentheses, hit enter, and you'll see basically what we have is the first guy, then the second guy, and you can see each one of them is separated by a comma space, which is basically the, the first argument, the comma space, the delimiter text, or the join text in this case, I guess. That's what we call it. But you can also see that after the second argument, there is this blank that we have, this missing salesperson's name. And that one is also in there. And then there is an, a, another comma space. And that's what's nice about this function is because the second argument, which is false, can be turned to true. And when this is true, it is going to ignore the blanks. So you see now when I switched it to true, that extra one that was a blank cell is gone. So that's how our text join function works. So you can obviously separate them anywhere you like. So if we wanted like a hyphen or something, and you can see that I'm doing space hyphen space because otherwise it, there wouldn't be any space between this. But that's basically the idea. That's how our text join function operates. So I'm going to use that in my advantage in this formula on top. So I'll go ahead here and this entire array from my if statement that I'm receiving, that basically what it's going to return as an end result, if the way you can envision it, it's basically going to be right now, uh, so we're looking for this southern, right? So it's going to be false, false, false. Then it's going to be true. And the true one is not going to say true. So it's going to be say false, false, false. And then it's going to say Paul Patrick because it's going to pass the if statement. And then it's going to be false again. And then it's going to be Dale Warren. And then it's going to be false again and so on. So everything that's not southern is going to just say false. Everything that is it is it's just gonna say the guy's name that's our array that we have so I'm simply gonna just make my life easy here highlight this whole thing and control X or command X to cut that so after I cut it I'll use my text join function and the first thing in our text room function is basically our text that we want to use for joining. So I'll do my comma space. I guess that's good enough for what we're trying to accomplish here. And then you can use obviously your own. I'm gonna go comma. The second argument here, I'm going to say true, which is basically ignore all the blanks. And finally, the third argument is the array. So what, what I did before, I just highlighted the range. So what I'm going to do now instead, I'm just going to paste my if function as an array and then I'll do another comma there to actually close my text join function so this should really be applied as an array calculation but right now it's still gonna work no problem so and then later on I'll talk about when you would want to actually convert this to actually be an array so it, it, because we have a pretty long string right now this uh, has all of them wow so that that's what we've got so we have true and basically uh, that's our current state of affairs so let's say now we go back and it doesn't actually work because we have inaccurate results that's not looking good at all so I'm going to quickly try to convert this to an array by doing my control shift enter or command shift enter that's my array formula now let's say that now it works so when it was not an array formula it was not working now as, a, as soon as I converted it as an array formula you can see that we have false 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 which is what I was basically talking about then we have Paul then we have false then we have Dale then we're going to have more falses and we'll have every time it's true, it's going to say the guy's name. So that's our array calculation. I Last time I tried it, for some reason, I thought it was still working in some cases when you don't convert it, but apparently it just gives you false positives. So I guess that's a good lesson out of here. Actually do use an array formula. But 
now that we have this, this is not exactly giving us what we want because we didn't want all these falses in there. That's not helping me at all. So if you remember this argument that true is ignoring blanks, but in our case, it's not a blank. What we're getting are falses and falses and blanks. So therefore it just shows up. So the only way we can use this true argument, which ignores the blanks to ignore those would be if we could convert those to blanks. So which is going to be very easy by using the third argument in our if function. So this would be our logical statement in our if function. This is what's going to happen if that function is true and comma, we're going to say what we want to happen when that's false. And what I'm going to do is double quote for basically an empty cell, I guess we could say in this particular case. So I'm going to go ahead now and hit enter one more time after I made that a space. And you can see because it's a space now, all those falses are ignored. They're not showing up. So basically we're getting an array that is being converted to text. And there it is. That's our string with all the guys in it just like that. So I'm going to actually get this out of the way, delete it. So let's say we also want now to do this for mid Western, right? Why not? So let's see if I locked everything. I locked this, I locked this looking good. Should work. So there it is. So that's our Midwestern. Let's go check Midwestern. We have this guy. We have this guy. This guy is there's it's empty. So it's being ignored again because it's empty. And then the next Midwestern is this this guy right here. That seems to be accurate. Let's see if we have any other Midwesterns. Nope. Looking good. So the next one over is going to be let's say Western. And finally, what else we have? I guess that's the last one there. Let's paste that in. Should be able to drag this down. And uh, it's a little long, but it works. No problem. So to make this nice, I guess, let's do some borders around there. And there we have it. Apparently we have a lot of people in Western region, but it is what it is. So. That's our result. So Northeastern, is there only one person? There it is, just one person. So it, let's say that Northeastern, there's one person. It looks exactly like the VLOOKUP would. So if we just, for example, copy Northeastern and put it here for VLOOKUP, you'll see that's what VLOOKUP returns. But now we can actually return multiple matches instead of just one. So there you go. That's a nice replacement if you want multiple match result from something like VLOOKUP. And again, another, I guess, uh, nice thing about this way of doing it that uh, you don't, you're not limited to just pulling columns to the right. You can actually look up in the right column and then return anything from the left column or really any column. It doesn't matter. But there you go. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you soon.